17 from the Green Bay 14. Rodgers in the gun, receivers deployed, four men down, fake hand up, quick throw, far side, diving catch. And the catch was made right at the 15-yard line, a pickup of one on the play. And it wasn't much of a game whatsoever. So it was caught by Greg Jennings on a knee on the far side. There was a good quick flip. It was being one of those little bubble screens with his fellow receiver out there blocking for him. But there was a lot of motorcycles always in the family. Um, my dad always had something laying around. And I remember going to my grandparents' house as a kid, and they had all these old, these old bikes stacked up in the backyard. And I actually got one from my grandfather. It was a 1966 Honda S90. It was a great little bike. It was a, kind of the, one of the first bikes I started really getting my hands dirty on. I looked around the garage and I realized in, in all these bins and boxes that there was enough here to actually put a motorcycle together. I'd spent so much time keeping my own bike on the road and familiarizing myself with it that um, it wasn't that difficult to do the first one. Um, and it was the only difficult thing was thinking that there was some way to make a living at it. And especially after I first sold that one and profited nothing. Uh, but it was it, it too was a Honda 750. It was silver, and it was the first time where I really started mapping out bikes in my mind, picking colors, trying to see them finished. Because if I can visualize them, it's very easy to, to make it happen. Cafe racers and hot rods have shared similarity, which is funny because being from America, my influence is a lot of the, has a lot to do with hot rods, but it's taken the shape of another influence, which was European style bikes. So it's it's the same concept. It's truly the same concept. I think hot rodding is the American version of cafe racers in England. It's the same concept you take. You take materials and old machines and you try to make something either custom or cool, whatever it is that you envision. It's really the lines that, that catch my eye. You know, growing up not being able to really afford British motorcycles and not really knowing where to find them. There, there was a million Hondas laying around and all I wanted to do was I had to figure out some way to sort of replicate what it is that I fell in love with about these other machines. When bikes first show up at the shop, there's a lot of things that usually need to just be undone with them. And that we usually strip about 50 pounds of useless garbage off the bikes put it in a Rubbermaid bin, and do away with it. There is an evolution process uh, that takes place because the idea is to, is to create a machine that has only what it needs to exist, to work, to run. And, um, and what's left is just, it's just a shell, really. It's just a... Uh, race bikes uh, is designing a cockpit for the rider more or less you have a you have typically your feet are higher up and further back 
that's for cornering to keep your toes from dragging so down. Where you You've be. got this cafe cowling or this seat pan yeah. that's designed it's, it's so you don't slide off the back of the bike on, under acceleration. You've got, yeah. you know, okay. sometimes so I'll do what I call knee cutaways on the tanks or hand pounded, hand pounded cutaways into the tanks for your knees to fit in. Um, your your hand your handlebars clip-ons um, are low and aggressive in front of you for improved cornering and handling and stability and the, quis the, the quickness and the crispness of the turns uh, with the shorter bars and things like that. What happens when you get down to the bare bones of the bike? The, literally it feels like it has a personality like it's asking for a line to be created and that's what cafes have there's a uniform line and it's it's funny because sometimes you can look at them and they almost have a bad posture to them there's a real trick to this eclectic scene um, and the biggest the biggest nemesis is the fact that you're working with a, with a product, with a motorcycle that's vintage in all respects. And it really, has, it really has taken years to develop good resources or vendors to find all the, all the, the parts that we go through on these bikes. Most of which, uh, you know, some of which simply don't exist at all anymore. But I can think back fondly on road trips. We've, my dad and I went out to uh, all the way to New Mexico one time to buy a couple of these old Hondas. And um, throughout the years, it's funny as the more you get involved with something, the more you kind of know where to go. You you have these certain resources. I like to work fast. I like to work fast because, I may have mentioned earlier, I'm just a little bit impatient with, with wanting to see something reach fruition, to get it out of my head and onto a bike. Because you, you dream about it all day and you just want to see it done. I, I've, I've always done it the same way. I never do the same thing twice. But as I'm going along, there's an evolution that takes place. It's a formless metal into what it could be a motorcycle seat or whatever it is that needs to be designed. Even though you may be the one shaping it, you've, it's, it's a piece by piece kind of a thing. Except there's absolute beauty in that thought pattern, in that thought process. How to make it work with using your hands. Limited, limited tooling, limited machinery and you see how everything that's there is all that has to be there. There is no room for anything else. You can feel a spirit in that bike. It, nothing ever happens. There's no two designs that are ever the same, so it's not, it's always a brand new experience with every bike. that goes into not only building a personalized machine, but when you ride something that you've designed, when you've created your own cockpit. That's, that's what I'm trying to do, is to create a more functional, elegant machine based on, upon what I was influenced from. And I think it's a, it's a different, it's just a different vibe. There's the burn. You're not going to ever see oh, this. Yeah, that'll be great. Sugar Bear has like everything 
any motorcycle part known to man. It's just, right. Yeah, it's yeah, one of those it's, resources. It's like, it's like the, uh, we call it a, um... We can check. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. That's a big part of this bit, dude. It is. It's finding those resources. It's finding parts. You know? How long has he been around? Oh, so you've been around time, since like the yeah. 60s. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. yeah.